Hi everyone, welcome to ThinkETL. In this video, let us understand what is an aggregated transformation in Informatica Cloud and how it works. Aggregated transformation is an active transformation in Informatica Cloud as it can change the number of rows passing through it and it is also a connected transformation. It can be used to perform aggregate calculations such as sums, averages, counts on group of data. Let us understand it with a simple example. So I have an employees table which gives the department information they belong to. So the requirement is to calculate the number of employees present in each department. This can be easily achieved using an aggregate query in SQL as shown below. Here I am taking the department ID and calculating the count of employees present in each department using the group by function. The same can be achieved in Informatica Cloud using aggregated transformation. Let's see how it works. So I am in my Informatica Cloud data integration homepage. Let's create a new mapping. Mappings create. Let's select the employees table as source. Let's add aggregated transformation after the source transformation. So here are the properties that needs to be configured in an aggregated transformation. The incoming field section shows the fields that are coming from the upstream transformation that is in this case the source transformation. Next in the group by field we need to select the fields on which we want to group the data. In our case we want to group the data based on the department ID and then calculate the number of employees present in each department. So our group by field would be the department ID. So I have selected the department ID as the group by field. Next we need to configure the aggregate tab. Here is where we provide our aggregate expression. So let's create a new field called employee count of type integer. Let's configure the aggregate expression. So we want to calculate the count of employees present in each department. So I'm giving count of employee ID. Let's validate it. Okay. We'll come back to the advanced tab in the later part of the video. So in the target transformation, we can see all the fields coming from the source transformation along with the aggregate transformation, but we do not need all the fields in our target. So we can select only the fields which we want using the field rule section here. Let me select the named fields as the field selection criteria. I can select the department ID and the employee count. I'll configure a dynamic flat file target. Let's rename the mapping. Let's save and run it. The mapping completed successfully. Let's inspect the output. So we got the department ID and the number of employees present in the each department using aggregated transmission. Now let us understand how aggregated transmission actually works. So whenever a data is passed through the aggregated transmission, it creates index cache and data cache. So the index cache basically stores the values configured in the group by fields and the data cache stores the calculations done based on the group by fields. For example, there is a department ID 10, which is the first row. It creates an index cache on the department ID 10 and starts storing the employee information here. Similarly, when it encounters an another department ID, let's say department ID 20, it creates an index cache on the department ID 20 and starts storing the employee information here. So similarly, whenever it encounters a record with department ID 10, it starts storing that in employee information in the data cache and so on. So once entire data is processed, 
So it then completes the aggregation on the data stored in the data cache and then pushes the data to the downstream transmission. This is fine with smaller set of data, but imagine if we are processing millions of records. In such case, it holds the entire millions of records in the cache to complete the aggregate operations first and then pushes the data to the downstream transmission, which could be causing a performance issue. So to overcome this, aggregated transmission provides an advanced option called sorted input. So that can be enabled in the aggregated transmission in the advanced tab by clicking on the sorted input. So whenever you enable the sorted input option, your data is expected to be sorted on the group by fields. So So we can simply add the sort of transmission here and sort the data based on the department ID. Okay, so now our data is expected to be in the sorted format. So now let's go back here. So we'll understand what happens here when the sorted input is enabled. So whenever it encounters the department ID 10, let's say the first record, it creates an index cache on the group by field, which is department ID 10, and starts storing the data. So as the data is sorted, all the records that are coming will be of department ID 10 initially. Similarly, when a new department ID is encountered, it understands that no more data of the department ID 10 is expected. So what it does, it completes the aggregate operation on the data stored so far, and it then pushes the data to the downstream transmission. So what happens, a set of data is already calculated and then pushed to the downstream transmission for the remaining of the logic to be performed on the data. And then it creates an index cache on the new department ID and start doing the same process. Thereby, the cache used by the previous department ID is already freed up and is then performing the operations on the another department simultaneously. So this increases the performance a lot and should be definitely used when you are processing a large amounts of data in the informatical cloud mappings. So let's take an another scenario where you have not selected any group by fields. What happens in such case? So when you have not selected any group by fields, so there is no field to create an index cache on. So in such case, Informatica creates a default index cache and starts overwriting every row in the data cache. So when a data is sent to the aggregated transmission without any group by field selected, the expected output is the last row from your data is returned as an output. Similarly, another use case of aggregated transmission is it helps in removing the duplicates from the source data. So this can be achieved by selecting all rows as the group by fields. What happens when you select the all rows as group by fields is that it creates an index cache based on all fields. So whenever the first row comes, it stores the value in the data cache. And whenever it encounters the same record with all rows as same, it overwrites the data which already stored in the data cache with the previous row with the current row. So thereby aggregated transmission can be used to remove duplicates by enabling all rows as the group by fields. And when you do not select any group by field in your aggregate transmission, the last row would be written as an output because it creates a default index cache and starts overwriting every input row in it. And finally, when the final output row comes, that's the only row present in the data cache and it is returned as the output from the aggregate transformation. So these are the different use cases of the aggregate transformation. It is mainly used to perform the aggregate calculations such as some average count on your data set. And when you do not select any group by field, it will help in returning the final row from your data set. And you can enable sorted input to increase the performance when you are processing the large amounts of data. So I hope this is informative. If you feel this informative, please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.